Welcome, welcome everyone, ladies and gents, to another happy Monday with <laughs> Worth the Truth, with the panel from Worth the Truth. We are so appreciative that you can join us on this evening and every Monday so far um, to hear and also partake of the bread of life, which is the word of God. So I am um, with no further ado, I want to introduce some members of my panel, and that is First Lady Julia Merced. God bless you. God bless you. It's good to be here tonight. Yes. Amen. And um, none other but, but they're rambushes, <laughs> beautiful, <laughs> intelligent, um, lover of God and the word. Um Evangelist Christlyn Robinson, my dear friend. Amen. Everyone, God we bless are you. so grateful for for her. And in the absence of Tony, she's a little bit under the weather. So we are going to keep her in our prayers that God Amen. would, um, you know, um, touch her body and um, you know and restore her back to her health. And with that, I just want to say this that I got a revelation on this week about our health. I know that we always pray and we said um, by his stripes, we are healed. And I know we always say, you know, um, healing is the children's bread. But the revelation that I got this week that blessed me, me myself, was that it has been paid for. So it is belong to, it belongs to you. It's not something that you have to beg for. You know, like if I give you a gift and um and you open the gift and 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 you lo love the gift and you say, Oh my God, what a beautiful gift. I'm not gonna go back and take it back. So God already gave us a gift. And what the Holy Spirit was prompting on me to say is like, Lord, I am claiming my inheritance. And I'm claiming my healing. I'm Amen. claiming my deliverance. Mm -hmm. I'm claiming my financial prosperity. I am claiming it because of your finished work on the cross of Calvary. So Amen. that's what the Holy Spirit is that said to me. And I just wanted to share that with you. Claim what belongs to you. It belongs to you and to your household. Amen. So Amen. now we're going to turn it over to our beautiful first lady, yes. Julia. Merced, Amen. the powerful woman of God. Yes, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are discussing fear versus faith versus fear. And we already discussed um faith that moves. And um oh man, I had the other one. <laughs> oh my god. Our God given faith. Our God given faith, yes. And I, I listened to you guys last week. It was really good. So today we're discussing why do we fear? Yes. And you guys know me. I love to go back to the, to beginning. the beginning. Yes. And oh my God, the revelation I got. And I didn't just get this like overnight. I got this when you first gave it to us. Yes. I got this like instantly. And I'm like, wow. Oh, my goodness. I had to get up out of my bed and write it down. <laughs> and I'm like, my husband's like, what are you doing? Because it was like in the middle of the night. <laughs> and I was like, I got to write something down. He's like, yes. What? And I'm like, no, I have to write this down. Because if not, I'm going to forget it. Because <laughs> you know how you get something? Oh, for sure. Yes. And, and if you don't write it down, you're going to, it's like, it just totally. It slips out. out. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. you're like, okay, I'm never going to remember what I mm -hmm. thought of last night. Racking your brain. I wrote it down and then I forgot where I put it. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was how many weeks ago, you know, that was like almost three weeks ago. And I was like, I was searching for it. And I said, oh my God, what did I do with this? <laughs> and then I found it. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember. And I went off of what God gave me. And I'm like, I remember all I know, He told me go to the beginning. So when I went to the beginning, first I had to look up fear. Mm -hmm. So 
Fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. Fear can be a noun or verb. Is to be afraid of someone, something as likely to be dangerous, painful, or threatening. So it can be either or. So you know, you have a noun. What is a noun? A person, place, or thing. And a mm -hmm. verb is an action. Yes. So it can be either something or an action. So that's what fear is. And what is fear? Fear is a spirit. It is a spirit. Fear it's empowered by a spirit. The form of a spirit. Yes. Then I started to think of why we fear. We fear. Let me go to the beginning first. And I want to go to Genesis 2, 17 to 25. I don't know if I should read it all, but because Tani's not here, I'm going to take some time. So, But it says, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in that day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, the fowl of the air, and every beast of the field. But unto Adam there was not found an help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord had taken from man made he a woman and brought him brought her unto the man. And Adam said, Now this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man cleave, leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, and the man and his wife were not ashamed. Now, the key things. First of all, God gave them a commandment not to eat of something. And yes. then what happened was they were both naked, but they were not ashamed. I'm going to tell you where fear comes. It says, Genesis 3, 1 through 13. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doeth know that in the day ye shall eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw, saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. That's where fear began. 
because I was naked and I yes. fell. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, the woman that thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the fruit and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Okay, first of all, fear came because when when you see something and you desire something and you listen to something you become disobedient yes and you they were given a commandment not to even touch this tree and what happened was when they began to know what was right from wrong knowledge they they began to have knowledge of what the truth was that they were naked because in the beginning they were naked but they were not ashamed but what happens when 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 you begin to realize what truth is and what right and wrong is you become ashamed now what happens is when you learn when you grow up and your parents teach you right from wrong and you do the wrong, what happens? You become ashamed. And what happens when you do the wrong? You get afraid. Why? Because you know what's right, you know what's wrong. But fear came then. Why? Because God told them not to eat of this tree. Otherwise, they were going to die. And it wasn't a death like, okay, they were going to die. Okay and choke and whatever what you know a death that we think okay they mm -hmm. were going to just drop dead right there but mm -hmm. it was a death that they would never be with god again in the way that they were at that time it was yes. a relationship death it was a death that they didn't want to have that should have never been because they had walked with god all the time and they were naked and yet not ashamed. Why? Because they didn't have the knowledge of being naked. Meaning, yes. what was God? God was their covering. And because God was their covering, they had no need of shame. Amen. There was nothing to make them feel ashamed. Why? Because they had no sin. Mm -hmm. But Amen. when you become disobedient, when disobedience takes root, yes, ma'am, then you become fearful. Because why? You know that you are doing the wrong thing. What happened? Their eyes became open. Their Come understanding on. was enlightened. So they knew the truth. They began to know good from evil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even though the devil, the, the serpent told them nothing was going to happen to them, hmm. something did happen to them because yes. they lost the relationship that they had from the beginning. Amen. There was, was a disconnection. Innocence. It was an innocence. Yes. They didn't realize that they had mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because the truth was they were naked. But they didn't know that the, the shame of their nakedness. Yes. God, they had no sin to cover up. Mm -hmm. But now that yeah. they had been disobedient, there was sin and they needed to cover it up. Come on. So when you sin, you got to cover it up. So what happened? One person puts the blame on the other. Mm -hmm. Puts the blame on the other. Mm -hmm. Sin always needs a cover up. Mm -hmm. Come on. Sin never can be just sin by itself. It always needs a backup. Mm -hmm. It always needs a cover up. Mm -hmm. And we can't be happy unless we, we need a cover. You know? And sin has no, no place in our lives. Amen. That's why Jesus had to die to cover our sins. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. Why? We could not amen, bear, amen. We could not bear our own sin. 
You know why? Because when we we know the truth of ourselves, we can't come before a holy God. God cannot look on us. Why do you think he took Adam and Eve out of the garden? The mm-hmm. garden was a sacred place. Oh, yes. It was a sacred place where there was no sin. Amen. That's why he was able to commune with Adam and Eve because they knew no sin. But as soon as they disobeyed, sin took root. And once sin takes root, you can't dwell in God's presence. Mm -hmm. So he had to dismiss them from the garden. And sin is a choice. It is a but choice. They had a choice to stay away from that from that fruit, but they chose to not obey. And that's yes. many times what we do. That's where we choose wrong. And I want to give the definition of wrong. The wrong is not correct or true. Something that's not true. Incorrect, unjust, dishonest, immoral and in an unsuitable or undesirable manner or direction, an unjust, dishonest, or immoral action, act unjustly or dishonestly towards. Mm -hmm. What they did was dishonest. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that's how the serpent was being towards them, dishonest. Yes. Everything he presented was dishonest, and they followed suit. And they did the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Now, Mm -hmm. we go by instincts. Our instincts should have told told them what they were doing was wrong. But they chose not to follow instinct. Because God already gave them the commandment that they needed to follow. But sometimes we, as, as people, we don't ever do the right thing. You know why? Because we have self-will. And God never imposes his will on us. He gives us all a choice. Amen. And it's up to us whether we follow it or not. That's right. But instinct, every man has instinct. Just like you guys were saying last week, everybody has a God-given faith. Yes. Every man has a God-given amount of faith. I don't care if it's the size of a mustard seed. Every man has a God-given faith. Amen. You know why? Because every man believes in something. I don't care if you believe in a pencil. You believe in something. (laughs) (laughs) Because people worship anything. Say that. They think that will make something out of their beliefs. They believe in it. Mm Mm-hmm. They believe in crystals. They believe in every little thing. But they have a God-given faith. And every man and every man has an instinct. Instinct is an innate pattern of behavior in animals or people to respond in a certain way that you don't have to think about or learn. Something you have never uh-huh. learned. Or it doesn't take time to think. It's your instinct to do something. Like to protect your child. Yes. It's an instinct to protect your child. It's your instinct to protect the loved one. And it was God's instinct to send his only son. Amen. For us. Because when this, this injustice happened to us, by our choice, because it was Adam and Eve's choice to eat of this fruit. And it was Jesus' choice to die on the cross. Come on. He made that choice for us so that we can be reconciled back to God. But that's why he gave us the choice to accept it or reject it. That's why. We have the choice where we spend eternity. So that's why when the Bible says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, it's because the choice you make is where you're going to spend your eternity. You're going to know what choice you made. 
because you know whether you have accepted him or rejected him. Yes. And when you come before him, you're going to know what choice you made. He's not going to have to tell you what choice you made. You're going to know the choice. I'm not sure who's internet. I know. That's what I was saying, because all of a sudden you went out. Yeah, um, I'm still right. plugged in here. Yes. Yeah, still charging. Right. But we all have that choice. And when we go before God, it's going to be our choice whether we have accepted him or rejected him. And when we are judged, we're going to know the judgment is just. Yes. Because it's going to be based on our acceptance of did I accept Christ in my life? And we're going to know where we're going to spend eternity. Mm -hmm. And that's why it says it's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Because people are going to be so mad at the choice that they made. They're going to gnash their teeth. Because they're going to be so angry at the choice that they made not to accept Christ when they had opportunities. Because they're going to see played back the opportunities over opportunities over opportunities that they had to accept Christ and never took it. Amen. And it's all by choice. Everything, every plan of God has been by choice. And that's what fear is. Fear is nothing that we learn. I mean, that we is an instinct because the Bible says. In 2 Timothy 1 and 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, Amen. but of power yes. and of love mm -hmm. and of a sound mind. Let me tell you something. Fear is a spirit. God did not give us, not even from the beginning. From the beginning, he gave us choice. And in Joshua 24 and 15, it says, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, there comes a time in your life where you got to make a choice. What seems right to you? It's all by choice. Sin is the choice. Yes. And we all have to, a choice to fear. That in Matthew 10, 28, Jesus said this. And fear not them which kill the body, but are, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him that is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Yes. See, G everybody says, well, Jesus never spoke about hell, but he did. He said, fear those that can destroy the body and soul in hell he spoke about hell so obviously there is such a place because i know a lot of places people say no after this life it's over no 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 there is a heaven and there is a hell yes and we are supposed to not want to go to hell we are, we have a choice to choose heaven yes we do we fear we should have a fear of hell but not many people do. Many people think that there's going to be a party in hell. I don't think so. That's why Some many, people of think us, so. <laughs> many of us are, are striving to get to heaven. Exactly. We're trying to make it right. I mean, we're not perfect. That's why we need Jesus every day. And I know a lot of people say, oh, there's a bunch of hypocrites in hell. No, I mean, in, in church. But the thing is, we're not hypocrites. We're, we're, we're imperfect people trying to get it right. Yes. That's why we need Christ. That's why we go to church. Because we can't make it right by ourselves. We need God every day 
every minute of the day. Yes. And only Jesus can wash away your sins. Amen. The Bible says all unrighteousness is sin. First John 5, 17. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. Meaning a sin that will not condemn you. And that sin you have to be forgiven for. Amen. You need to be forgiven so that you cannot be separated from God. Fear. The beginning of fear is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. When, when you fear God, it's the beginning of wisdom. That's the only good fear there is, to fear God. And to know that God is on your side. Amen. You know, I know that, you know, instinct, I didn't get to give what instinct was, but instinct is a natural and inherent aptitude and impulse and capacity, intuition. Sometimes your intuition tells you don't do something. And yes. some people do it anyway. That's why you have a lot of people in jail. That's why you have a lot of people die too young. That's why you have a lot of people in the wrong situations. Because they do things they know they're not supposed to do. But by choice, they do things. And why? Because some of them have no fear. Say that again. And even if they had fear, they go past their fear to do the wrong thing. I wish people had a godly fear so that they wouldn't do the wrong thing. We need a godly fear. Yes. No. So that's why the scriptures the thing. That's um Julia, that's why the scripture says fear God and keep his commandments. Yeah. Um, so it's a fear of reverence. Yeah. And, um, you know, because he's the only one that can put our bodies both, um, you know, in hell or, or, or heaven. That's right. Um, so. That was my take on why do we fear? We fear because of disobedience. Fear because comes because of the disobedience. true disobedience. Yes. Yeah. That's and one of the vehicles of that, that when fear you know enters. know what to do. When you know the right from wrong. Fear yes. comes because of knowledge. When you know right from wrong and you choose the wrong, that's when fear comes. Because I know a lot of people, their their parents, when they grow up, they they hear their mother's voice ringing in their ears. Don't do that, son. Don't do that, daughter. And they're yeah. pregnant. They end up on drugs. They end up doing the 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 horrible things. And then they say, man, if I only would have listened to my mother, if I only would have listened to my father. Yes. And then they wouldn't be in the conditions that they're in. Amen to that. So that was it. All right. Um, that was beautiful. Uh, when you were speaking, I was also saying that um, there's different type of fear. We all know that, you know, some people have fears of spiders snakes um you know every creepy crawling thing um you know um um closed spaces um heights you know but the bottom line is fear does not come from god mm -hmm. and it comes from the enemy it's imputed by the enemy upon us so we can fear um something it's just like from from the time we are kids um they start with, uh, you know, when you're telling the kid, come here, come here, when they start walking, you know, come here, come here. And they like, like stumbling, like they, mm -hmm. they, they're they fearful to, to, because they, I don't know, somehow, I don't know how they know that it, they're going to fall. Mm -hmm. And you telling them, just come here, look straight at me, look, come here, come here. And then they still stumble. So um, I have three reasons God tells us why not to fear. God is bigger than the object that we fear. So that's one reason. We shouldn't fear. We should know that God is bigger than any situation, any circumstance, any trial that we have to endure. But in our humanity, because like um, Ju um, First Lady Julia beautifully said, from the beginning, you know, men um, 
Adam and Eve, you know, um, brought sin into the world and they were the first ones that fear God because they felt, I'm pretty sure they felt that disconnection. There was never no more that fellowship with God. And because they felt that disconnection, that's why it was, um, you know, that fear came. That's what they say. We were afraid. Um, so fear came from the very beginning. Um, we have um, the Egyptians, they, um, the, is, the children of Israel fear the Egyptians. They fear Pharaoh and his army. Later, they fear the Canaanites. Now, they saw God brought them out with a strong hand. They saw God did all the all the signs and wonders with the plagues and the frogs and turn the, the water into blood and, you know, all these different 10 plagues that, that um, God did to show them that he was greater than Pharaoh, that he was greater than the army, and that he was also greater than the sorcerers and the magicians that was surrounding Pharaoh. Because witchcraft, uh, can make you fearful when people um, do witchcraft against you or try to impute um, sickness, disease, illnesses, infirmity upon you, or people do like what they say, voodoo or whatever, that can instill fear in some people. We saw um, Isaiah, um, I, was it I, um, Elijah? Elijah, that he had to confront the 400 um, false prophets he stood with boldness and mm -hmm. uh, and, and call on God and said, you know, you guys call on your God mm -hmm. and build an altar. And he told them to drench it with water. And they were there cutting themselves and whatever. And he was laughing at that point because he had somehow confidence in God that God was going to answer him. And God came and when the, he built his sacrifice, um, the altar of sacrifice, he told them, drench it with water till the water was like making a skirt around the altar. And he said, let the God, the only God that, that exists, the only God that has all power, let him come down and lick this sacrifice. And God did it. But then Jezebel, who had killed a lot of prophets, said, you know, I'm going to kill you. And then he became fear fearful. But God had to like go back and reassure him. I'm still with you. I'm still with you. He said they are more here and that, that have not bowed down to the enemy. And it's just like us. Like at, at, at times we um, give in to fear. Like another gr another big thing um, arises or the enemy does something bigger against us and then we end up fearing all over again. So the children of Israel also fear once they pass through the, the Red Sea that they were going into the promised land that he promised he was going to give them the land of the Canaanites and where everything flowed with milk and honey. Now they just overcame Pharaoh and his army and all the sorcerers and whatnot. Then they went through the desert where he fed them, where he was a pillar of cloud by day, where he was a pillar of fire by night that was so thick and the army was right behind them and they couldn't see the Israelites was right, right in front of them. They overcame all of that, went through the Red Sea and yet still when they came to the Canaan, land they were also fair fearful because they were giants in the land mm -hmm. like they totally forgot that god was all powerful amen and um also jacob the object was uh, of his fear was the fear of the unknown of the future um so the disciples also we remember that they feared when they were in the storm and they woke Jesus up and they said, care is that now that we perish. And Jesus was right there in their midst on board. Then um, Jairus, it was uh, a parent's worst nightmare, the loss of a child. And he went to Jesus and asked Jesus also for help. Um, in each of these scenarios, God proved himself to be bigger than the object of the source of fear. Because mm -hmm. the enemy 
always, um, especially our mind is a battleground. And I know that, I know that because I have experienced that by myself. That's what the scripture said, cast down every imagination and everything that highly exalted itself against the knowledge of God, bringing it down to the captivity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why he says that? Because everything we ponder on it first in our mind. No, I can't do that. No, this is too hot. No, that's too cold. No, I can't go that far. No, I don't have enough money. No, I can't. I can't make it um that way. I can't go this way. No, especially like when it comes to like singing and stuff. I remember I was terrified at the age of 11, the first time they made me sing. So with that, I'm saying that um, fear doesn't come from God. It comes from the enemy and it comes from us allowing the enemy to come in and open that door. God, um, the second thing why we shouldn't fear, the reason why we shouldn't fear is God is worthy of our trust. Fear is faithlessness or misplaced trust. So that means that our trust and confidence shall always be in God. And sometimes we put it in things, in people, and, and, and um, we um, choose other things to be our resource instead of going to our source. Fear will cause us to trust our resources or place our trust in someone or something else rather than God. Abraham, he lied. Um because of fear of the Egyptian and caused himself to say, tell Sarah, don't tell them you're my wife, tell them you're my sister, because mm -hmm. he was afraid. So mm -hmm. fear entered him uh, um, about the Egyptians and he asked her to do that. So when she did that, um, they took her in into the, the king's um, palace because she was beautiful. And what happened, God strike them all with, 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 a, with a sickness. And because of that, um, the king said to him, why did you lie to me and say that you were my sister, that she was your sister? And a, a lot of times, sometimes we find ourselves in situations where we are prompt to either speak the truth or lie. And a lot of times, because of fear of what's going to happen, like I said, the unknown, People choose to um, to lie instead of telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Gideon also feared the Midianites. Um, he caused um, him to trust this army. But the beautiful part about Gideon is when they were going up against the Midianites, God told him, you know, um, you, you're taking too many people with you. And he told them, take them down by the river. And I'm going, and he said, the ones that, that lap like a dog, those are the ones that I'm gonna, he said, cause I, you, you, you are going with too many people. Mm -hmm. And I was reading the scripture when I was preparing this lesson and it said that the Midianites was like the sand of the sea, like a, it, a number. Wow. And the Israelites were not that many. And God wanted to show Gideon, I am stronger. That's right. Than anyone on this earth. Mm -hmm. And that's why he told him, he said, you're taking too many people with you. And then he went and he he, uh, he ended up from thousands of, uh, of soldiers to 300. Wow. And with those 300, um, Gideon gave them an instruction. And this thing just like baffled me and it blessed me beyond belief. He said, the sword, he said, do as I do. And he said, the sword of the Lord, he said, go before us. And he told them to blow the horns and to beat. And to make a long story short, God did it again. Amen. Mm -hmm. So um, the antidote to fear is trust. So like I said, feed your faith and starve your fear. So um it's the conviction that I'm, not only God is bigger and greater than the object of your fear and to know that we can trust him. How has fear caused us to trust in something or someone other than God? Uh, a lot of times when we have a quote, quota um, to meet, the rent, the, 
you know, the bank payment, um, something. Sometimes we tend to fear. It can be like the last day. But I know that if we put our trust in God, he promised to supply all our needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. And he will not fail us. He will not, you know, leave us um, out there. And um, so with that, it's like we have to trust him. And that's what faith is, trusting God Amen. no matter what the outcome that's is. Right. So how has fear um, caused us to trust in, um, in, in other things? Because we, we panic and we get anxious. And the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your request be made unto God. So trust in God rather than man. It is better to put a trust in God than to put a trust in, in, in kingdoms and nobles. Amen. And the third thing, and with this I'm finished, God called us to obedience. And Julia spoke on it, um, that, you know, disobedience brings fear. You know, fear. people get fearful when they get caught. Like they were sleeping around and they was having fun. But when they got caught, all of a sudden, oh, my God, my wife found out, my husband found out. And then what happens? They be like, oh, they're going to leave me. Wait, what were you thinking? Like, okay. what do you think was going to happen? You know, some people can deal with it. Other people be like, no, you're out. That's it. I'm done. Okay. So a lot of things like like First Lady Julia was saying, it's a choice. It wasn't time to, um, in Exodus, 14 and 15, it wasn't time to stand still and cry out to God, but rather it was time to pull up their tents and begin to move towards the Red Sea. And this is with the children of Israel. They wanted to stay there, but God said, no, it's time for you guys to move. Pick up your tent and move towards the Red Sea. And what he told Moses, stretch forth your, the, the rod. And the Red Sea became a wall to them a big old swimming uh, um, fish tank, and they were able to pass on dry ground. When we were afraid, our natural inclination is to remain huddled in a camp. In a camp. So you know that fear imprisons, right? And fear um, right. binds you. And the Bible says, and it has torment because you become fearful. Right. Um, that's why when a husband beats his wife or vice versa, you know, it's to instill fear in the person. So the person wouldn't move or leave, that the person can stay stuck in that situation. And a lot of women, better women, some of them um, die because they're afraid that if they step out, that's something uh, that they're, um, you know, that they're not going to make it out or whatever, that they, they don't have the resources, they don't have the money, they don't have, um, you know, sometimes even relatives turn their back on them as they um, move forward. Um, when we were afraid, our natural um, inclination is to remain huddled in a camp. Fear paralyzes and it immobilizes. But because we know the battle is the Lord, the battle belongs to the Lord. We can put one foot in front of the other and take the step of obedience when God, God call us to get up and go. Whenever yes. God say go, we supposed to go. Whatever, whenever God say speak, even he said, um, don't be afraid of their faces because in that very hour, I will give you what to say. So a lot of times, even when you get a, a, a call, to, to speak in a congregation. And sometimes sometimes people say, no, not me. I'm not called. I'm not anointed. But God says, we got, that's why we have to retort back to the word of God mm -hmm. and remember what the word says. Stand on the mm -hmm. word of God. Mm -hmm. um, when fear has immobilized you and deter you from acting in obedience to God, maybe it's time for you to break camp. Amen. Amen. And I'm done, Sister Chrislyn. Well, Take I'm it not going to be. <laughs> I'm going to be really brief because literally every scripture that you had um, spoke about, um, even Elijah, 
um, and Jezebel, Gideon, um, you know, those particular scriptures, <laughs> excuse me. Um, I had actually had those scriptures, but um, because they, they, they have so much substance to them. But I want to, but there were different points that I wanted to, to discuss. Sister Julia gave the meaning of the word fear, um, which is definitely on point. It's an unpleasant emotion caused uh, by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain, or because you believe that it's a threat. And that word believe is also in the word faith. It's because you believe in something. Yes. Um, and for Christians, of course, what you believe in is the scriptures. You believe in a uh, religious uh, set of doctrine. Um, and, and so your belief is in that. So faith and fear both have a belief of something. One is for good and one is for the negative side of that. Yes, um, amen. And so... Um, First Lady gave three words that I thought were just amazing. Uh, she said, knowledge of. Yes. Roots, roots and instincts. And those were the points that I wanted to, to literally talk about to kind of just not oversimplify it, but to be, because we all have relatable fears. We all have relatable fears. Right. Um, and if we can take somebody like Gideon or the children of Israel or the prophet Elisha, um, and these had great faith in God. These men had great faith in God. They believe God. I mean, they believe God enough to go over into the promised land. They believe God enough okay. to go before 400 prophets. Um, Jeremiah believed God in spite of the chains, the stocks. Um, impending persecution. Paul believed God in um, 1 Corinthians, I believe it's um, 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, or 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Um, when he sought the Lord and, and for the thorn that was in his flesh, and he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Um, and so it was sufficient in his afflictions. It was um, sufficient in his nakedness, his peril, the sword, whatever it was. Um, his belief in God was strong enough to overcome those things. The Hebrew wall of faith, um, they did not see that promise, but they believed in it, that God yes. would make good on his word. But all these people went through something. And um, even though Abraham was the man that God made the covenant with, um, he still feared a man over his wife. You understand? And so yes. he lied. So it made me wanted to think about um, the human side of fear. You know, there's that reverential fear that Adam and Eve had for God, right? We have that fear of the Lord. That's why we try to abstain from sin right. uh, because that reverential fear means to worship God. It's just a way of worshiping God. Yes. I do it because I worship God. Yes. So I stay from it. I stay away from it. I know it's wrong. I make different choices based on that because uh -huh. um, I really do fear God who can kill the body and the soul, right? And both the soul, and yes. So, yes. And God, and the word, the word fear not, or the phrase fear not, is in the Bible 365 times. Wow. There is a day, a scripture for every day why God tells us to fear not. There's a scripture for it for every day. There's 365. It's mentioned at least 365 times in the Bible. And so, you 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 know, when you think about our human fear, right? God speaks to our human fear, mm -hmm. right? And He tells us, "Be anxious for nothing." Yes, That's true. but with yes. prayer and supplication. Yes. Make your request known unto God. Unto God, yes. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Mm -hmm. It's able to keep our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus because God knows that we would have those human fears. Yes. Yes. And he said, consider the lilies of the field. They neither toil nor they spin, right? God tells us um, 
to uh that's it matthew is our sister julie was talking about 10 and um actually it's six right yes yes let's see yes And how that we should, well, Luke 12, 22 to 34, um, it's in there as well. <clears throat> Worry because we have fear of lack, um, because we have uh, certain needs for housing, a roof over our head, clothes on our back, food on our table. Um, companionship. Companion, whatever, whatever you feel like, we are, we're fearful that we'll run out, but did not he tell, tell his servant David? Uh, or David said, I've been young and now I'm old, but I've never, never seen, seen the righteous, the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed mm -hmm. begging for bread. Mm -hmm. So um, there is a natural fear that inherently comes with human, yes, uh, human mind. And we can't get away from that because it is actually a part of our DNA. But how we respond to our fear has to be according to the word of God, as um, Sister Asher was saying. So, you know, why do we fear? That, that is the $24,000 question for me. <laughs> yes. Why do we fear yes. with all that God has told us? In his yes. Life, why do we fear? And that's where I wanted to get to the word, the word that Sister Julia was using, root. What is the, what is, what does it stem from, right. right? It has to be more than just a reverential feel, right? right? And I started doing a little research and it made me dig up on my in my own person mm -hmm. that most fears that we have, most fears that we have come from trauma. Yes. Yeah. Most of our fears come from trauma. Yes. It comes from yes. an experience. Yes. And so we draw on our experiences, and that's why we have these natural fears that exacerbate into something that's really big. For instance, yes. I've been through domestic violence for a long time. And so it's like a form of programming. There are triggers there when you're living in that lifestyle. When something hits that trigger, you automatically connect to it, mm -hmm. right? So, for instance, if the doctor gives you a bad report and says you have X, Y, and Z, and your grandmother had that, and your grandmother passed from that, or your grandfather, or your sister, or your brother, it automatically pops into your head, oh, my God. Yes. But I'm covered under the blood. Amen. I'm covered under the blood of Jesus. Every generational curse, yes. everything that every chain, every fetter, bind and rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus. In the Lord, mighty I'm name of Jesus. To your word, I shall live, I shall not die. To yes. The to the Lord. I destroy by the blood of Jesus that bloodline that passed this on from generation. You yes. have to say what God's word said. And there are yes. Rehearse it. people in the Bible who had generational curses right. and that were, 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 were broken. And so we have to reflect on whatever it is that tries to keep itself attached to our lives. Because as Astrid was saying, a lot of this stuff is tied to a spirit. Yes. And these forces amen, have torment. The Bible says fear has torment. Mm -hmm. And when yes. I'm rehearsing in my mind over and over again, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to my finances? What's going to happen to this? What's going to happen to that? I'm being tormented. Tormented. Yes. I'm being tormented by this. Yeah. Just the thought yes. of it. And literally in my own personal life, I would just on my knees praying, talking to the Lord. And God said, you know, this is not a natural war. Come on, the weapons. This is warfare. A spiritual warfare. Yes. And you need spiritual weapons and you need to know how to fight. Yes. And yes. So the Bible tells you to take unto you the whole, the whole armor, armor of God. Yes. You got to take it all. You've got to protect yourself. I don't know yes. if we said it in the podcast. 
you have to protect your mind. You got to protect your yes. heart. You got to yes. protect your body. You got to put the word of God on it in the mighty name of Jesus. And Amen. when something tries to attach itself to you, whether it's physically, mentally, or emotionally, you got to bind it. You got to cast it down. You got to cast speak down every in imagination. In yes. the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Rather than fear. I'm not saying that the fear isn't real. Wow. I'm saying no weapon. That's no, what I'm saying. On. Yes. No weapon. It's formed, but it should not prosper in my it's life. It's not it going to prosper. The word of God. Now, I know that's a hard pill to swallow, but until we take God at his word, I was just reading the scripture where it says, I think it's the first John 4 and 18. It says, perfect love casts cast out. Yes. 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 It says, there is no fear in love. That's right. But perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Yes. So these kinds of things I've been pondering in my heart because I really want to know, Lord, what's going on? What's happening? Right? Because when the enemy cannot make you leave God, he'll try to wear you out. Come yeah. on. With something. Uh, until you just throw your hands up and, and, and give up. Until you don't want to fight anymore. And when I look on the life of the apostles, what these men went through in their lifetime, when Paul describes it line by line about what he struggled with, you would think that some of this stuff would make him fear. Some of it would make him give up. Some of it would make him want to throw in the towel. But no. He didn't. That's right. But that's they what the enemy God wants. His word. They took God at his word. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about what lives inside of us, what we allow to live inside of us that causes us to fear. We can't run from fear. Remember, yes. Elijah ran from Jezebel. He yes. ran from Jezebel. Yeah. He was at his greatest apex. Yes. Doing a great work for the Lord. He yes. took down all the false prophets. Yes, 400. Yeah. He took down 400 prophets at the word of God. Yep. And when Jezebel said about this time tomorrow, you're going to die, the prophet ran. Man, yep. He ran for his life. Yes. Literally ran for his life. And God prepared for him food to eat. He didn't go back. He yes. kept on running until yes. he got into a cave. I have to read that thing. I have to read it. I have to read it. Ahead, go I yeah. have to read it because <laughs> there is something so significant in it yes that we should understand the dynamics of of of, of where fear can take us first kings 19 chapter come on so elijah um let me go down to about the mm, Elijah, at, there we go, there we go, okay, all right, so Elijah, uh, then Jezebel sent the messenger unto Elijah, saying, so let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time, that's a threat, the enemy is threatening, yes, and when he saw that he arose and went for his life, and came to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under, under a juniper tree. He requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Now he's in a self-pity mode. He yes. wants to die because mm -hmm. yes, he's at his tired, weak moment. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. He laid down again. God provided for the man of God. He didn't speak to him at that time. He provided for him, knowing that right now what you need is some sustenance. He yes. had the man of God. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because 
The journey is too great for thee. The journey is too great. And God knows us. The yes, journey inside is out. Great. We yes. got a ways to go. And God is saying, I know the journey that you're on. Yes. yes. I, I, know I know what know you're facing. All right. Yes. I know what you're facing. I know what yes. you're facing. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said unto him, what doest thou here, Elijah? Why, why are you here? What you doing here? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life. Lord, look what they've been doing. People ain't yes. doing the right thing. I done been working so hard, and now they're going <laughs> to kill me. Lord, they just want yes. to seek my life. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. A great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. Mm -hmm. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood it at the entering end of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, what doest thou here, Elijah? And God asked him a second time. But this time he had his face wrapped in his mantle. Oh my God, that blessed my heart. Come on. So much, wrapped himself in his mantle, wrapped himself in his anointing. Oh my yes. God. Thank you, Lord. Now God can talk to you. He's not in the rocks. He's not in the fire. He's not in the wind. Just be still and hear the voice of the Lord. Yes, he stand still and see. And he's asking him, what are you doing here? Come and on. that's just like some of us when we get in these places. Yes, say fearful, that. Because the enemy has threatened yes. us, threatened our lives. He done left his servant behind thinking he's protecting him, you know, and that's like us. Let's protect the ones we love. Let's leave this alone. Let's leave that alone. Let's run for our lives. And we're running. <laughs> but at the end of the day, God is still God. You, you can't run from yeah. God. God is saying, you got to face this thing. Yes. You got yes. to face it. Don't worry about it. I got you. I got you because at the end of the day, what happened? Jezebel got torn into pieces. Right? Jezebel was threatening his life. That's right. Yes. But God was in control. And so Come when you on. read down and you go down into the scriptures, not only in verse 14, it says, and he said, I, he repeated the same thing about, you know, what he's been doing, the ministry, you know, how people are seeking for his life. And the Lord said unto him in verse 15, go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you get there, or when thou comest, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nishi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abedelamah, however you pronounce it, shall anoint, shalt thou anoint to be a prophet in thy room. God ain't got no time. God is saying, listen, I prepared you. As yes. a chosen vessel, I anointed you. I called right? you. <laughs> and you had a work to do. Now you need to go back and you need to prepare somebody else. And that's, that's what right. God does. Yes. He prepares us to prepare to other people. Others. Yes. And you're going to tell yes. Elisha the challenges that you faced that you had to go through yes. being a servant of the Lord. Yes, you may fear for your life. Yes. Sickness may come. Paul had to face it with whatever thorn that was in his flesh. Whatever it is that you may have to deal with. You know, we're, 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 we're faced with death sometimes. Yes. The apostles, some of them were martyred. They were killed for the sake of the ministry. 
in prison. But God is saying, you know, God give us the word. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I yes. I finished my course. Yes. All this later for me, a crown of righteousness. Yes. And to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The yes. life that I live in Galatians 2 and 20, it, I don't live it for me. I live it for the son mm -hmm. of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So mm -hmm. no matter what we're facing, I get it. I trust me, I do. I nearly lost my life at least three times in the last year. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying to the people that are watching this podcast in the face of poverty, in the face of financial struggles, in the face of the loss of life, even your very own, in the face of persecution, in the face of your enemies, whatever it is that try to cause you to fear, know that at the end of the day, yes. no matter what happened, you belong to God. Come yes. on. Nothing can happen unless God allow it to happen. Come on. And nothing can take your life. Jesus said, no, no man one takes my life. No I one. I lay it down. I lay it down. I take it up again. Yes. And we are his fruit. Yes, come on. And if we had that same spirit that rose Jesus from the grave, it shall quicken us. It should quicken us. we shall us. be with the Lord always. So Amen. God will provide for us. God yes. will see us through it. God will see us through it. Now, I'm not going to um, lie and say that you won't struggle, that you won't go through, and things may happen. Bad things happen to good people. Yes. Bad things happen to good people. And I know that's a hard pill for us to swallow. Yeah. Yes. It is true. It is true. The enemy seeks to annihilate us and take us apart and to pick us off one by one. Oh and that's why it is so important for us to rank arm and arm together. To yeah. link. Link like to a link chain. link together as the body. Yes, because one can chase a thousand and two can put ten thousand. Two shall put ten thousand. Yes, and so to fear the fear, the reverential fear of God is to worship God, is to say, Lord, I love you, and I'm going to keep your commandments. Come on, yes. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to keep them, Lord. I'm going to yes. reverence you. I don't care what people say or think. Oh, mm -hmm. you, you know, you you still saved, you still follow the Lord, you still this and that. Yes, yes, Absolutely, positively, unequivocally. That's exactly what I'm doing. Yes. Right? But that fear to fear life, that's next week's podcast. If you fear, if you continue to fear, what does that fear do? Yes. How does it impact you? And so the, Bruce Willis made this movie, Live Free, Die Hard. Yes. You say that. Got to, you got a one or the other. Yeah, and, and a lot of people think liberty is oh well I got my freedom well you could be walking around in the streets and still not be free that's right you could have a gazillion dollars and still not be free not come free. on and I don't have to give you a laundry list of people that I can name from that I just want to encourage God's people yeah. yes Lord that no matter what happens in your own personal life mm -hmm. God is still with you he yes. said he would never leave you. He would never forsake you. And he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. Amen. Because whether he's faithful to the believe. undertaker or the upper taker, I'm still, I still belong to God. It's Amen. a win situation for me. And we can't fear death. No. You know, and that's why the, the, the scriptures ask the question. I think it's the second Corinthians 15, 55. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Yes, oh, grave, grave. Where where is your victory? we're not going to stay in the grave. Amen. Like, our loved ones will miss us and all that. And I don't want death to be that, you know, to be the final thought. The reality is fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Yes. You got Amen. sickness in your body. You fight the good fight of faith. Yes. You say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, your word declares and you rebuke that devil from off of your heart off of your lungs, off of your kidneys, off of your blood vessels, off of That's your blood right. cells, off of your brain, off of your mind, wherever he's attacking in the name of Jesus. Right. It is written. 
it is written. It is, like it my mom written. always say, it is yes, written. It is and written. the devil just looks for that weak point in your life yes. where he can get in, like Elijah, when he was on the high point, the vulnerability started to come through. We get vulnerable, and he looks for those vulnerable moments to attack us and to take yes. us. Down. And he says, ha, got you now. Yes. I took this one. I took that one. You're not healthy. You're not this and you're not that. You know what? Whatever way it's got to go, I'm going on to be with Jesus. That's so amen. I'm just encouraging the people of God. Faith over fear. Like Astrid said, feed your faith and starve your fear. Okay. Don't yeah. give it no room. Don't give, Don't give no it no ground. Faith. Give up no ground. Don't give up no ground. You yes. fight the good fight of faith and you hold on to eternal life. Whatever is happening in your life, there's a scripture for that. Amen. And you give the scripture and say, Father, in your word. Because trust me, somebody done been through what you've been through. Somebody's experiencing what you're experiencing. That's why I say we all have relatable fears. We have traumas. We have things that we, we've been through. And because we see things happening. Yes. What we see, I don't know whether Apostle Smith says it, don't let what your eyes see determine what your, what your heart believes. What your heart believes. Don't let what your eyes see determine what your heart believes. Yeah, that's what you say is there, but here's what I believe. I believe God's word. That's right. And God's word says X, Y, and Z, and you give that word back to God. Because Amen. not one one jot or one tittle of his word will, word will fail. Now, in the great scheme of things, and I'm going to end with this, in the great scheme of things, whatever's in God's perfect will, whatever God has that he wants to accomplish, yes. that's exactly what's going to happen. And we may not understand it all, but God does have a purpose in it. That's right. And it will manifest itself down the line. You just don't know how. Amen. But don't ever stop saying to the Lord, Lord, your word declares, Father, and this is what I believe. Hold on. Yes. To Hold, Hold on, on to the, the truth. truth. Hold on to the truth. It will outrun a lie any day. My mother should tell us when he's coming home. The no, truth no, will no. outrun a lie. It will. And she'll tell us. You might as well go ahead and tell me the truth. Because she said, my mother said, you know, the truth will slow walk a lie down. I mean, my mother has some crazy sayings, but they were always true. Okay. Yeah. She said, the truth will slow walk the lie that you think you got away. Like some of these criminals, three de decades later, they done killed somebody, stuffed the body under the, in the backyard or something, <laughs> and they think they got away with it. All it's true. Sudden, it's true. Something comes up, and they think they done moved over to another state, done build another family, another home, and 30 years later, four new kids later, a business later, so they're coming with a search warrant. Yeah. Now you're 95 years old going to jail. Yep. Really? Yes. I'm just saying. So that's that's my that's just my um little spiel on on um why do we fear? You know, it's inherent in us to fear one way or another, reverential fear or fear through experience. Um it is there. It's just what fear do you choose to be? That's the thing. Living. Yeah. And choice. how you respond huh? the choice. is most important. Yes. It's yes. as you know, yes, as you say, it's by choice. So it's that's by choice. The young ladies. Uh, so, uh, Chris Lynn, give me the scripture again. It was first King 19, and I know you read um a few verses. Um from verse two, I read from verse two. It's actually 18. from verse two all the way down to 18. 18? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just want to end with saying many are the afflictions of the righteous, Amen. but the Lord but will the deliver Lord. us out of them Hallelujah. all. So Amen. you feel the aches and the pain return to sender. These pain <laughs> and these aches that I'm feeling, this bad feeling, this fever, this whatever, I return it back to where it came from because sickness mm -hmm. didn't come from God. It That's comes right. from Satan. There's a spirit of illness. There's a spirit of disease. There's a spirit of infirmity. And there's a spirit of sickness. They all come from Satan. So return it back to sender. They don't belong to me. 
Jesus Christ paid the price for me on the cross of Calvary. So I'm returning it back to sender. I'm returning it back to who it belongs. It belongs to you, Satan. It Amen. doesn't belong to me. So take your filthy hands off my body because you yes, are Lord. trespassing Trust on that. God's property. I've been clothed with righteousness. I've been clothed in holiness. Hallelujah. I've been sanctified. I've been justified. Yeah. I've been glorified. In the name of in Jesus, so I am not Jesus. receiving what Hallelujah. you want me to hold on to. Yeah. It don't belong to me, and I'm sending it back you, to where it belongs from. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope you guys you, enjoy this segment because I'm feeling the presence of God here, you, and I can burst yeah. out right now. Like oh, I yeah. said, God, God this week when I was preparing yeah. this lesson, the Lord said yeah. to me, you, you know what? Pray for the manifestation of the thing. Ah, yeah, Pray yeah. for the because ah, it belongs yeah. to you. I have yeah. given it to you. Yeah. When he Jesus. said, if my hey. people, which are called Hallelujah. by my name, shall humble themselves you, and pray mm -hmm. and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from you, heaven Jesus. and I will. He said, heal they land and forgive them from their sins. Thank so you, we Jesus. have to retort back to the word of God. God, your word said, and because you know that you are a child of God, you are a blood wash. Yes. He paid the sacrifice and he finished the work for you. You yes. have a right to say, God, healing is the children's bread and I'm yes. a partaker yes. of it. So God, give me what belongs Hallelujah. to me. You came that Amen. I will be made whole body mind soul and spirit mm. and that includes every area of my life Thank there you, is Jesus. no lack in heaven there is no sickness That's in heaven right. so i am claiming the inheritance that belongs to me and to my children yes. and god had to remind me and to remind the people of god i am still the i am amen. that i am amen. what is it that you need what is it Hallelujah. that you want what is it? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything, is there anything too, hard? too hard? Hallelujah. Thank is you, there Jesus. anything yes. that you need Come on, that I you. can't provide? Is there any mm. door that you want open mm. that I can't open? Mm. And is there any door that any man can close that I can't that open? I can't open. Huh? He Hallelujah. said, I will make rivers in the <laughs> desert. I Thank will make you, the crooked path straight hey. for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Only believe. And you know what? I, I, I was reminded, Sister Crislin, of this uh, acronym with FAIR. FAIR has two meanings. Yes, yes, yes. FAIR everything and run or mm -hmm. face everything mm -hmm. and rise. Yes. And we are going to rise yes. in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. because we are the children hey. of the Lord. We are the called out of the Lord. We are yes, his sir. anointed and he wants us to walk in that authority. He said, behold, I give you the keys of yes. the kingdom that whatsoever you. you bind here on this earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever yes, yes. you lose on this earth, that's Matthew 18 and 18. I will release it. Yes. I will yes. make sure that you got, you know what? When I was reading about Gideon and I'm done with this, I, 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 that thing, when Gideon told the, the 300 men, he said, repeat, do as I do. And he said, you know what? The sword of the Lord go before us. Uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh. And a man today, I was coming today and the enemy was trying to hey. block me from coming here. But I have these two women, powerful women of God praying. And Jesus. because they yes. pray, this programming is here. And that's what to show you that the enemy was trying to stop yeah. this because somebody, faith is going to be set on fire. Amen. And I'm telling you, I'm on fire right now for the Hallelujah. Lord. And I was like, you know what? The sword of the Lord go before me. I started repeating that as I was right, driving. Preacher. Anytime I, the traffic came in front of me, I was like, the sword of the Lord go before me. That's Amen. why we have the word of God. And, and, and with this, I'm finished for real. David said, <laughs> thy word have yes. I hid, hid in it. my heart. 
Right here. Encourage yourself in the yes, Lord. Sir. Yes. Encourage yourself in the That's word right. of God. That's right. Bring it out. Ah, Bring hallelujah. it. Speak it out. Declare it and hey, decree Lord. it. That's God true. gave us the authority to declare and decree it. Hallelujah. I am healed by his stripes. Yes, I Lord. am healed. Yes. I am delivered yes. because of the finished work of God. I am Thank prosperous. You, his word said that he desired hey. above all that we be prosperous and in health even as I was so proud to so devil guess what you ain't taking my finances you ain't taking my health you ain't taking nothing that belongs to That's me right. it's been given to me like since first lady Julia said I'm seated seated in heavenly places I'm seated yeah. at the table I'm not eating the crumbs God, you know oh, what? Yeah. I'm a child. I'm mm -hmm. not a bastard. So That's I'm right. seated at the table. And mm -hmm. I know the crumbs had all has all the ingredients of the bread, but we got to start appropriating what we, who we are all and right, who preacher. we mm -hmm. are yeah. in Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Please Hallelujah. share it. Please share this. If this blessed you, please mm. share it so somebody else can be blessed on tonight. I want to thank everyone that that thought it not robbery to be with us tonight and to um, be a partaker of this meal that was presented before you. Amen. God Amen. is still the I am that I am. And I'm going to thank ask you, the Jesus. ladies to give their last word and then we are going to end this segment. You have nothing to fear if you have God in your life. Amen. Amen. So Perfect like love. Amen. Sister Amen. Chris Lynn. Perfect love casts out all fear. Perfect love. Thank Let you. his love be shed abroad in our hearts. And if you know that God loves you, you know you have those things which you have desired to have. And that includes healing and everything else attached Amen. to whatever your heart's desire. So mm -hmm. with that, I I want you guys to know also that whenever you miss any one of our programming, we always come try to come on at seven on the dot. And, you know, sometimes we go over, most times we go over because the Holy Spirit takes over. But you can go back to YouTube and subscribe. And every time we come on YouTube with that, with um, notify you that worth the true is on. Amen. Amen. So with that, I'm saying you have been empowered. You are excellent. You are enough. And you are especially love. loved by God. And Amen. we love you. Yeah. So okay, let's keep loving each other. Let's keep praying for each other. Let's keep lifting each other. Like um, Evangelist Robinson clearly said, we are a link. A chain is, uh, you know, a two-fold cord is not easily broken. Not easily broken. It's yeah. not easily broken. So if we pray for one another, if we minister to one another, because there are going to be times that one of, one of us is going to be feeling weak and yes. we can reach out to one yeah, another and say, you know what? Lift me up in prayer. I need strength right now. Amen. You know, vice Hallelujah. versa. That's what the Bible said. Let the weak say, I am strong. And, and let the strong bear the infirmities Amen. of the weak. Amen. Amen. So have Amen. a blessed week, everybody. In the name of the Lord the Jesus, Jesus Christ, have a blessed week. Pray Amen. for your children. Call them yes. out by name, like um, um, First Lady Julia says. She has her, her prayer that she does at, at 5 in the morning on Wednesday, Thursdays, and Friday. I think Sister Denise Danny does it on, um, I Thursday don't know if it's morning. Thursday morning also. Morning. So wh whichever day. venue you, you join, you're still linking up, and Amen. we still are, are greater like Elijah, I think it was the, um, the prophet that said to Je Jehazi, they are more with us than what's against us. Yes. Right? They are more with yeah. us. So just think about it. Heaven and his, the host of angels are Amen. with us. May Amen. the sword of the Lord go before us. Amen. Amen. Amen.